Where people live, they can be so close to the natural environment. This is one of the features of Tai Tam Country Park. In fact, Tai Tam Country Park is located in the eastern part of Hong Kong Island, accounting for one-fifth of the Hong Kong Island. It covers four reservoirs that are connected by the Tai Tam Waterworks Heritage Trail. Along the Heritage Trail, many of the waterworks facilities have been declared as statutory monuments for example, the masonry bridge made of granite. And the dam are at least a century old. It takes about two hours to complete the entire trail. In addition to historical architecture, Tai Tam also offers an abundance of ecological resources that awaits our exploration. We have a date with Christine today. She's a PhD candidate in intertidal ecology and biogeography. She visited all the mangroves in Hong Kong to carry out biodiversity researches. That's why she's familiar with the semi-terrestrial crabs we're observing. When did you become fond of studying crabs? I started studying behavior of crabs when I was writing my undergraduate thesis. Crabs are very interesting. Do they talk? Well, they... They don't use languages to communicate like us. They use their claws. They use hand signs. Claws signs? Mm. <laughs> they would wave their claws at times, or they would make use of the um, comb-like structure on their claws, uh -huh. and they rub oh. on it. Oh. oh. To make a sound. Wow. That's impressive. You usually come here to observe crabs, but the water current here is so strong. How do, how do they manage to habituate here? They mainly habituate near the shore the like side. this. So it's like where here. we're standing right, where now. we're standing. Oh, yeah. Indeed, I can see them moving. Right. I can spot a very small one. <laughs> yeah. I saw some in the mud hole there. There is one. Here's one. Really? A crab just came out. Oh, I can see it. I was looking at this very big one mm -hmm. just now. It's not moving at all. This is, um... Orisarma patchouni. Orisarma patchouni. Mm hmm Its back is purple. No, its claws are purple. It's coming out. Orisarma... Patchouni. Orisarma patchouni. I can see more of them inside the mud hole. Orisarma... They're in there. Its claws are, um, purple. red. It's kind the of red. The one with red claws is Chiromantes hymatiker. Chiromantes hymatiker. Wouldn't its vibrant colors draw attention from the predators? That is the color of its carapace, but it resembles uh, the red and yellow color of dried and fallen leaves, I so see. it serves as their camouflage. These mud holes here are actually I saw their them. homes. Right. The holes they live in are so big. The holes are so big. What a big house. They dug them. The crabs living inside should be very big. Indeed, the length of their carapaces can be more than three centimeters, so quite big. Oh. There it is, it came out! This one appears to be green. This is Parasisarma continentale. So this is Parasisarma continentale. Its carapace is green in color and its claws are orange. I see. I want to film you too. Look, it's moving, I can see it coming out. Hello. Wow, it is so beautiful. I can spot some greenish patterns on it. The color of its claws gradually fade from purple to green. That's right. Actually, what's the difference between these crabs and the crabs we usually see in the water? They are adapted to terrestrial respiration meaning which they can breathe on land. That's because of the very unique structure of their gills. It's kind of like 
kind of like lungs. There are tissues present that allow them to breathe when they're on land. Oh. Oh, my foot's stuck. Be careful. Hey, Parasasarma continentale and Patsuni. Orasarma Patsuni. Orasarma Patsuni. Orasarma Patsuni. Yeah. We must memorize all their names before the day ends. <laughs> Wow, we've now arrived at the Lilliput Mangrove. Yeah, I've never been here. Hey, I saw one. There are a lot going of Going in. Are there any other species here? I saw a very beautiful one. It's got a kind of a bluish body. The only mangrove on Hong Kong Island is in Taitam. Mm. You may encounter different kinds of crabs here. I see. I saw a single clawed one. It's waving hello at oh, yeah. me. Hello! Oh, there's two! Right, there are a lot of them. Hello! What kind of crabs are Hello. they? They're splendid fiddler crab. Oh! Or watermelon crab. Look closely at its carapace. You can see the black patterns on its bluish green color. And there are black stripes on them. The black stripes make them look so just like, like watermelon. watermelon. Hence the I name see. watermelon crab. Is it really one clawed, or is it just that the other claw is smaller? It has another smaller claw. I see. The male fiddler crabs usually have a big claw and a small claw. The larger claw is for waving to attract females or for fighting. The it smaller waved one at is me. for eating. <laughs> <laughs> Do the baby crabs rarely come out and wait for the adults to feed them in the hole instead? These crabs don't have the habit of feeding their offspring. Oh. Oh. They don't feed their young. No, they, they don't, don't feed them. Mm. After they hatch from eggs, the crab larvae would stay in the sea for a period of time, after several stages of metamorphosis, mm. to outgrow their exoskeletons. They grow into small crabs. Ah. Can you see them over there? There are a lot. It's a whole Look, group. They're fighting. They're fighting. They're fighting. Are they done fighting? The one at the top seems to have the upper hand. Yes, I'm filming what it. What about the one at the bottom? It's not giving up. He got him. They're so strong. They're getting tired. Is the one at the bottom smaller than the one on top? Uh, eh? Uh, oh no! Why does it leave? <laughs> we just stood here. We dare not move. Yes, but why? There are many crabs. We also found a kind of crab that are extremely, extremely shy. If we take a single step, they would rush back into the hole at once. Their bodies are all white. Christine, what's the species of those white crabs? They are milk fiddler crabs. Milk, milk fiddler, fiddler crabs. crabs. So this is another type of fiddler crab. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's moving. Look, it's here coming it is. There it is, the white one. If a female crab is attracted to the male crab, she would follow the male crab back to his hole. Oh. <laughs> and it'd make its way back up after visiting. She may visit 10 Checking or more house holes sizes. before deciding on which mud hole to mate I in. I see. What are the characteristics of their habitat? The river basin that the habitat is situated in has different kinds of microhabitats, and each of them is slightly different. For example, there are pebble beaches, sandy beaches, muddy beaches, and mangroves. Hmm. You might spot different species of crabs in each of these habitats. When you sleep tonight, <laughs> would you dream of being chased by crabs? Hey, what's my name? What's Pachuni. my name? Oh, no, 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 no. What's my name? Chiromantis hemoticur and splendid fiddler <laughs> crab. During our time of observing the crabs, most of the time we were just moving the pebbles, which seemed quite easy. Mm -hmm. Is there anything we should do or we should pay close attention to during an ecological observation like this? When crab watching, we may stay farther away from the crabs so they'll be more comfortable to come out and resume their <laughs> normal activity. Just like us observing from far right. back just now. That's right. Crabs are actually quite sensitive creatures. Mm. When we move slightly towards them, or if they see or feel the ground slightly shaking, they will make their way back into right. the holes. Then we won't be able to see them. Mm -hmm. 
Is there anything we might do without knowing that would affect or hurt the crabs? Uh, there is. Bear in mind that when we go crab watching, we might move the pebbles. We should always place the pebbles back to where so they were. So put them back That's how right. we found them. Mm -hmm. I see. Because or else, there are other organisms besides crabs that live under the pebbles. Other organisms. They might die of dryness I or see. heat. I understand. Right. I just realized today that there's such a diverse crab habitat in areas nearby our reservoirs. When you're taking a walk next time, pay attention to the rich biodiversity in Hong Kong. Remember, cherish them as you observe, and don't forget to let them live well. Only then can we see them in the future. It's white! Wow, there are so many of them! And that's milk fiddler that's right. crab. This feels amazing! Oh, it's so crazy here. It's really spectacular from here. You've got to look from this angle. This is so interesting. Because they haven't stopped waving at us. Hey, come here. Come over here. Over here. Look over here. It's crazy over there. So interesting. They're doing the wave. <laughs> We don't have any tools. Can we spot the little animals at night with just our phone lights? Since the ecologist hasn't arrived yet, let's try it ourselves. Whoa, it's so big! There's a cricket next to it. Would it eat it? There it is! The survival of the fittest is happening right before our eyes. The frog is running away. It ate the cricket? <laughs> what precious footage! I caught it on tape! Hello. Hey, you finally Hello. arrived. Look Hello. what I Hello. filmed. Your outfits today are fine, <laughs> but I've noticed that you're doing something wrong. Yes? Right. We use special equipment for nighttime. Using your phone for lighting is dangerous, because that's for making calls. Ah. If your phone battery runs out, oh. what do you do for emergencies? You're right. you're right. That's why we always go on night walks with a flashlight and also mm. backup batteries. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Tonight, we'll take you to see some frogs, the species mm. that are more unique. This is the main character for today. Our target, short-legged horned toad. I'm keeping my distance because I might scare it off. No worries, frogs of this species seldom jump. They don't move. It's my turn. It's right here. Not too close with your light. Okay. Don't shine the flashlight directly. Use a side light instead. Mm. One flashlight is probably enough. Let's turn okay. off the rest. You see this kind of frog? During nighttime, there's one on the side. Yeah, here's another one. Hello. That makes it two. You may notice there's a spike on its eyelid. Right, right, right. And that's how it got its name, the short-legged horned toad. Why are they called short-legged? Are their legs really short? Their legs are less developed because they know they don't have to run as the camouflage is sufficient for self-protection. Although these two short-legged horned toads are not good looking, right. they're almost only found in Hong Kong. Aren't they? Yeah. So they're natives. Yeah. What kind of food do they eat? Since it's so small, the crickets we yes, saw. the crickets we saw. That Most frogs have big mouths, big. so it can swallow it, can. it whole. It has a big mouth. We're now relying on sounds to find frogs that are more unique. Right. What we're hearing now are made by the short-legged horned toad we saw earlier. Another species we're after tonight is the Romer's tree frogs. The sound they make resembles the chirping of crickets. Wow. They made a sound near here not long ago. They're really hard to find. We have to wait for them to make a sound again. Could they be on the trees? I found it. <gasps> My gosh, really? Uh, <laughs> it's They're here. Good. There's a small moving? one here. Amazing. Right. It is very <laughs> small indeed. Here. It's so small. It's smaller than your fingernail. It's about the size of mine. This is the biggest they get? That's the biggest. This is a male frog, which is smaller than the female ones, oh. which are around two centimeters. Actually, I was only able to find it by the sound it made just now. Oh. Only male frogs croak. You might pay attention to its toes. Yes, there are rounded pads Oh, you at can the see tip. it. 
Those that look a little swollen are the suction plates that enable I the frog see. to climb walls and trees. Oh. It's one of the two tree frog species in Hong Kong. Right. Why are we finding them specifically today? Because we want to see species that are exclusive to Hong Kong. Exclusive to uh -huh. Hong Kong. Hong Kong only. In 1953, bioecologist Mr. Romer first discovered these tree frogs in yes. Kamikaze oh. Cave, located on Lama Island. Mm -hmm. For the field trips that followed, more of them were spotted in Lantau Island, Cheklap mm. Kok, and Po Toi Island. Do you rely on the sounds they make to find them? <laughs> Mainly by sound. Also, oh. we're aware that the tree frogs would look for uh, puddles after the rain to lay eggs, and that's why we know mm. there's a oh. chance we'll spot them around it's here. It's our lucky day. We're very that's lucky right. today. It rained heavily we had this really morning. We really heavy rain. Ah. That's why the frogs are active and make more sound. Mm. They're considered an endangered species worldwide, I so see. they are very precious. In the beginning, when I heard we're going to observe frogs, I swallowed my heart. I was like, ah, no worries, I'll try it. That's right. But when I finally saw the real frogs right in front of me, I don't know why, but I found them very interesting. Also, they're really just as big as my fingernail. It's just so magical. So I think, <laughs> to be frank, I am afraid of the sound made by bullfrogs, but it's fine with me. I feel like I've overcome a huge mental barrier today. It's so interesting. What is this? We spotted another species of small frog here. So interesting. But its habitat is different from the one we saw just now. It's drier here, as it's not a rain puddle underneath the woods. And they are climbing up a wall that is bald straight. We rarely so see cool. them climbing up the walls. It just stopped here. <laughs> They're on the ground most of the time. It shouldn't be a tree frog because it doesn't have the rounded suction pads at the toe tips. Yes, they don't. Very well observed. They are called greenhouse frog. Green frog? Yes, greenhouse frog. But they're not necessarily beneficial. Huh? But why so? We identify them as an invasive species because they're not native to Hong Kong. By whatever path, they made their way to Hong Kong and spread Let everywhere. Let me make a guess. Did they hop into potted plants overseas and was transported to Hong Kong by mistake? Correct. Really? It's because they love to live in greenhouses and they would leave their eggs in the soil. So it's possible that they were brought around the world during international trading of soil and plants. These frogs are originated from Cuba. Whoa. So far away. It's because they're very reproductive. It's amazing. They'll be everywhere in a short period of time. If there are so many of them, won't they compete for food? That's why we identify them as invasive species, because they might compete with native species for food and habitat, and the number of native species might drop as a result of all that. Judging from its size, who will they be competing with? Romer's tree frogs. Yeah, that's why we have been monitoring whether their increasing number would lead to a drop in a number of Romer's tree frogs that are unique to Hong Kong. It's a real issue. Hey, look at this one here. That's a gecko. Could you see it? It, it ran away. It, it went, went back, back in, in the, the hole. hole. It, it settled now. We often call them toad snake or wall gecko, but the most common ones are divided into different species. You see, this one has a long tail. Can you see the serrations on both its sides? It has the little dots. Those aren't little dots, but serrations. Oh. Those are serrations. Really? And that's why we call him spiny-tailed house gecko. Spiny-tailed spiny house gecko. Its tail's spiny like a saw. There are only females in the species. Huh? Yeah. So they're androgynous? They're not androgynous, but they're all females. After their birth, their ovum becomes naturally reproductive. Therefore, as they lay eggs, the eggs will uh -huh. grow into babies. It's hatching sure. is deemed successful. Oh. Mating is no longer needed. Really interesting. interesting. Right? So they don't need courtship anymore. Uh -uh, they don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> only the species in only Hong Kong. Only the species. Yeah, is like spiny tailed house geckos are the only ones like that. Whoa. Wow, I learned something new today. Short legged horned toad, Romer's tree frog. I'd love to get to know and memorize them. As we were walking, I tried my best to remember what the ecologist said, and I tried to memorize all their names by heart. Arasarma Pachuni. I seem to like the nature a lot too. I don't know why, I just want to memorize all of them. It's like I would get to know how they live simply from the characteristics they have shown, and it feels like it would aid my understanding of their character too.
Ah, uh, yeah, make sure you look at the walls, too. There might be something there. Ah, uh, look, here. What? Uh, there. Well, look what out, be it? careful. Uh, oh, Did it's you notice? crossing the road. Yes, it's too dangerous for you to cross the road like this. But it's walking very slowly. It's better at swimming, but it walks really slow on land. Is it lost? So interesting. Yeah, it's also... Oh, it's not. Uh, this species is called Hong Kong warty newt, or Hong Kong newt in the its past. Its tail is different from those of the geckos we saw earlier. Ah, it's because it's not a lizard, but an amphibian. It knows how to huh? swim with its tail. But why is it walking on the ground? Uh, well, it's fine for them as long as it's a humid environment. It's because the species will forage in the leaves during summertime. As it's almost winter, which is breeding time for them, they'll make their way from the woods to streams and then into water. It's making every effort to crawl to a water to source. To find water. Um, they prefer the deep pools in the streams among mm. the mountains. Uh, they'll ovulate in the pool. Oh. So uh, when they're attacked by other ones, uh, this species will roll over and really? fake their death. That's funny. Um, it rolls on its over? Belly, there are a lot of these vivid orange spots. I want to see them. Yeah, they serve as warnings of its toxic nature. Its body carries tetrodotoxin, which is hypertoxin. Is it really toxic? Yeah, so when it rolls over, the orange color will become warnings to the birds or mammals that it's not edible. Oh, we're very lucky tonight. We spotted a lot of animals. Very fruitful indeed. How do you guys feel about the night walk? We were able to spot them quicker as I would have thought. Yeah, I suppose they would be so hard to find because it's nighttime, but it mm. turns out to be so easy, not oh, difficult at all. Oh, but all the credit all. goes to Fan Fan. <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys also listened and looked for them really carefully. Mm. It must be explained that whenever we take a night walk, our greatest emphasis would always be on minimizing disturbance. Everyone did great this time in this regard. And in what ways can we minimize disturbance? Mm. The flashlight, for instance, should mm. not be illuminated too close to mm. the object. If feasible, we should switch to red light during our observation. Is red light better? Some little animals are less sensitive to red light. Oh. If we observe with red lights instead, less disturbance would be caused. Also, we highly suggest, if you're going on a night walk, uh, to go with an organization that has experienced and accredited ecologists working there. If so, you're able to learn more as you observe, and it also helps reduce the disturbance caused to the environment. The biodiversity in the nature of Hong Kong is so rich even during the night. The most important thing we've learned in the night walk is to follow an appropriate ecologist. Firstly, it's safer. Secondly, you learn ways to observe that would cause minimum impact on different organisms. The more vibrant Hong Kong's countryside is, the more magnificent our nature will be.